Gabrielle is a San Francisco real estate broker and investor with more than 18 years of experience. So far, she has published three books about real estate investing and is working on the fourth book in the series. She lives in San Francisco with her cat and loves to travel off the beaten path and connect with people, their cultures, and languages. Please welcome Gabrielle Dom. Hello, everyone. I hope you can hear me. Is that, can you yes. just, uh, everybody can hear me? Yes? Yes. Great. Thank you. Wonderful. Welcome. Um, let me, before I go, I'm going to share my screen and then we'll go from there. Uh, one second. Okay, here we go. Now we're going to go from here. All right. Uh, everybody hopefully can see this. Is that yes. correct? Mm -hmm. Oops, sorry. I clicked something and then it didn't. Uh, here we go. All right. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for your interest in investing via self-directed IRAs. Whether you already are an investor or want to become one, this specialty instrument blessed by the U.S. government can propel you into a very comfortable retirement. So this is an instrument for retiring well. Um, hang on, I need to move something. Okay, here we go. All right, so please enjoy the presentation. And before we start, uh, my usual disclaimer that nothing in this presentation uh, implies uh, either legal or financial advice. So please um, always vet your investments, do the right thing, when you, uh, when you look at things, don't take other people's word for it, do it yourself. <laughs> All right, so I think that's, uh, that's it. Um, here's what we'll cover. Uh, and that is first, what is a self-directed IRA? And then how to retire with money in the bank. That sounds like that rings very nicely, doesn't it? And then how to do that via investing in real estate in that account, uh, in the self-directed IRA, uh, how the instrument works and what next steps you might take, all right? Um, the next part is just to tell you a little bit about myself. You probably have, uh, if you've attended previous um, presentations, you already know most of this, but I'll repeat it. <laughs> All right, so the first thing is that I have been in real estate for 20 years uh, here in San Francisco and the Bay Area. Uh, I am a longtime San Francisco resident, and uh, I have a BA and an MA in history. Um, and when I was raised in Germany, um, my parents were in the hospitality industry. I love to travel the world and uh, learn about other cultures and uh, people. And also, uh, whoops, sorry, I, I'm moving too fast. And I also, um, you know, love trekking when I have the time for it. Obviously, the pandemic is still with us. So I haven't done any of that for the last, what, two years, something like that. All right. So here we go. Um, you are probably aware that most Americans today must plan their own retirement. And by that, I mean, they must uh, plan how they intend to fund and afford uh, their lifestyle in retirement. For that, you need to have the monies the, in, in the right account. You probably also know that more than 60% of Americans today uh, will depend on social security, on friends and family, and on charity in their golden years, their so-called golden years. That's a scary statistic. Uh, and uh, to put that into context, there are people in between that, uh, but only 5% of all Americans have sufficient monies in the bank to retire well. So um, hopefully this instrument will give you some ideas of how to join those 5% and bolster that percentage, because that's the whole idea. You want to be in that 5% if you can at all do it. 
That's my hope for you. That's my hope for myself. Uh, and that's what I've been working for. Uh, so hopefully you'll find this helpful. All right. Um, I could digress on that, but you uh, probably know that I uh, am, I just wrote a book on the entire subject of self-directed IRAs and so forth. And there's a whole chapter in there talking about how we got to this state of affairs that I just mentioned. All right, so um, the book is coming out, by the way, on December 15th this year. And you'll see um, a special slide toward the end of the presentation about that. All right, next, um, we basically want to go into what self-directed IRAs actually are. You see that little piggy bank there and the idea is saving for retirement, but more than saving, being able to grow the money you have. Yes, you can do this with regular brokerage houses, with stocks, bonds, real, uh, uh, stocks, bonds and mutual funds, et cetera, ETFs, all of that. Uh, and those companies, those brokerage houses also will tell you that you have a self-directed IRA. Well, the reason I tell you that is, and it's true actually, is that you, you tell them what to invest in. What they don't tell you is that it's only their products you can invest in, which means stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, all of that. Um, and that's fine. I have nothing against that. I have, uh, I have stock, uh, stocks myself, so I have no problem with that. Uh, but there is a whole different world out there for self-directed IRAs. And that's what we're going to talk about today, because truly self-directed IRAs um, allow for you, the investor, to invest in what's called alternative assets. Well, alternative assets include uh, real estate, and Bitcoin, private placements, all kinds of other th stuff. But because I'm a real estate broker, you're hearing about real estate investing in these accounts today. That's what my book is about. That's what I'm going to cover today. Obviously, we only have an hour together, which means um, that I can only go into the overview versus into all the specifics. But hopefully you walk away with some value. OK. All right. So self-directed IRAs came into being in 1997 in the form that I'm talking about them today, okay? Um, so because of that, let's go to the next part. Uh, I've already covered how they're different from other IRAs, but to reiterate, uh, they are the same as, uh, as, as uh, brokerage house IRAs, except they're way bigger in terms of what you can invest in. And because of that, brokerage houses will not be able to help you to invest in real estate. If you call them up today, they're going to tell you, no, we don't do that. And that's because it requires a specialty custodian to do that. And I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, so that was the other important point that I wanted to bring to your attention. All right. OK, so next part. Here's the man who wrote. Roth IRAs into uh, law in 1997-98, okay? Uh, William Roth, who was a Republican of Delaware, he was a Senate Finance uh, uh, Committee member, and uh, I, I believe he passed away in 2003, if memory serves, but uh, we thank William Roth the senator for his contribution because he created an amazing instrument for us. You'll see what I mean in just a minute. So that creation means that uh, it, it, with a Roth IRA, okay, versus a traditional IRA, um, you can invest in money, uh, sorry, you can uh, contribute to these IRAs uh, but you won't get tax benefits as you contribute. You will get the tax benefits when you make withdrawals from the account. I'll go into that a little bit more. Uh, Christy, would you mind doing uh, just a quick poll question to see who has um, self-directed IRAs and um, you know what, whether they have a traditional one or a Roth one? Is that possible? 
Yes, um, Leah's going to do the poll. Oh, great, great, thank you. Uh, I'm sorry, the first question that comes up on the poll is, do you know what SDIRAs are? So, and it's not showing me the others. Uh -uh. Okay, well, uh, I guess we'll have to skip it. Hopefully someone will, uh, will let us know later whether they have such an account, whether they'd like one, whether they have traditional ones or uh, regular ones. Um, there we go. Thank you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see if the next one will show up. Yeah, it's only showing this one, unfortunately. Are people actually seeing it? Well, I just, I was trying to skip to the actual, the question that you are asking them now. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. You know, don't worry about it. We'll do, we'll do it uh, uh, later. Maybe you can Here find it for I've later. I've got it. I've got it. Here we go. <laughs> okay. All right. I think we, we got everyone. Is that correct? Uh, just about 22 of 23. So I'll end the poll. Okay. Sure. All right. Well, uh, okay, great. All right. Uh, well, I see that uh, most of you do not have a self-directed IRA. And uh, I want to encourage you to obviously get that, um, get that set up. Hopefully I'll convince you to do so. And to those of you who have such an account, congratulations. Uh, I think that's wonderful. Okay, so hang on. Uh, I'm not sure how I'm going to get out of this. Okay, I think I got it. <laughs> oh, technology, it's so fun. <laughs> All right. Uh, thank you for participating in this. Okay, let's move on to the next. Huh. I cannot uh, seem to adv advance my, uh, my slide. Here we go. Okay, here we go. So um, here is a slide about the benefits of self-directed IRAs. Now that picture could be anybody, <laughs> not just this young family. So uh, forgive me if I have not included your age bracket in, in this. Uh, you should have one, such, account, such an account. So, for a truly self-directed IRA, uh, alternative investments are allowed. This is an instrument the IRS uh, regulates. So if you want to read all the fine print, they have a wonderful, wonderful publication called Publication 590 on their website, and you can read all about this instrument, okay? Uh, if you want a more digestible component, you can read my book or someone else's. All right, so uh, depending on whether you have a traditional um, IRA or you have a Roth IRA, uh, it will be tax deferred for the traditional IRA and tax free growth uh, for the Roth IRA. So there's a big difference and I'll show you what I mean by that in just a second. All right, now, Mm, this is this is it. Uh, if you don't have those of you who don't have a self-directed IRA at this point, uh, you should be making contributions to such an account um, for a number of reasons, aside from the fact that uh, Social Security is probably not going to support a retirement uh, down the line. So um, the contribution limits, I will show them to you. Um, Again, this is, this is a more superficial presentation in that I cannot go into all the details, but uh, the IRS has tables on what they allow, et cetera. So if you go to their website, they will be able, you'll be able to see it all. 
Okay, so access to dollars you are saving anyway, and that's about the annual contribution. All right, and then tax deferred, I'm repeating myself here. Uh, so tax, tax deferred or tax free profits, again, I'll go into that. If you have a um, traditional IRA, you're going to get uh, a tax deduction on your tax return for the year you make the contribution, okay? If you have a Roth IRA, you will not get such a deduction, but you will get uh, something else that I will go into, tax-free profits, okay? So uh, you can also compound interest in these accounts, depending on what you do with them, with the monies you have in there. Uh, and then there is some asset protection, but qualifications apply to that. Something I'm not gonna go into here, just be aware that uh, these are specialty accounts uh, regulated by the IRS. And uh, they, you know, they, they have some asset protection in place. Not everything is protected. So it depends on how you handle the account and various other things. And then, of course, the biggest hit for uh, self-directed IRAs in this form is that you're creating wealth for retirement. Uh, big, big one. And here's one that many people actually like, and that is the accounts are inheritable. And because of that, you can also leave, leave a legacy and uh, will them to a nonprofit, for instance. So uh, there are many different ways to uh, gain benefit from these accounts, okay? All right, but because we're uh, talking about real estate investing in uh, self-directed IRAs, because I'm a real estate broker, once again, um, that's my special niche, if you will. And uh, we're talking about here what you can invest in in these accounts. Well, it includes anything from raw land to single family homes, to apartment buildings, to commercial real estate, to parking lots, to duplexes, to com I mean, commercial I already mentioned, um, to all kinds of other things. Uh, also, what I don't show on this slide, you can invest in notes, mortgage notes, you can invest in uh, options, there are option contracts you could do. I mean, there just, there's just a, a huge amount of uh, variety as to what you could do, okay? We'll come back to that um, in a minute because it has implications for how much money might be in your account and how you can grow the account. Some people say that, you know, I don't have enough money to do any of this. Uh, and some people have accounts that have hundreds of thousands of dollars in them uh, and they can easily do this. So uh, for people who don't have that kind of money in their account, and for those who don't ha yet have an account, uh, know that you can do uh, much of this without having a huge amount of money in the accounts. Well, that should be like right there, a big one for you, hopefully. All right, so here's the contribution. Uh, currently the contribution limits for either a traditional or a Roth self-directed IRA is $6,000 a year, uh, unless you're over the age of 50, at which point it is uh, $7,000 because the, the IRS, the instrument, the whole point of this instrument is to uh, grow people's retirement uh, accounts. And if you're over 50, you probably don't have that much time. So time is a big factor in all investments, uh, but the IRS uh, will allow you $1,000 more if you're over age 50 for contributions. So if you put that money in, you're probably going to, if you do any math, you'll see uh, most likely you will not get rich on this contribution. So it's not about the contribution you make. Do make the contributions, do make the maximum, but the actual power of this is in how you use the contributions in the account. I hope that makes sense. Okay. All right, so next part. Here is, uh, I've already mentioned uh, the traditional IRA. So if you were to, uh, to have a $25,000 initial investment, 
and you invest it at either 12% or 15%, here's what that would look like uh, over, um, over 25 years. Now, 12 and 15% to most people who have 401ks or 403bs or whatever else uh, is probably like a huge increase in what they would see in those accounts. Um, so, you know, I, I believe for 401ks, the return is somewhere between three and 5% at the moment. Well, that is not even covering inflation. So, so it's probably better to do something else with that money. Um, again, there are ways to do that, but uh, I won't go into how you can uh, leverage your 401k or 403b um, right now. Um, anyway, this is one way to do it. So with this traditional one, you make that money, but you have to, when you take it out, when you retire and you take your first distribution, the IRS will, uh, will impose tax on you. The idea with a traditional IRA, however, is that maybe you are in a 30 some percent the tax bracket today. And when you retire, you suddenly drop down to, I don't know, 15. I'm making up this number because I, I, don't, I don't know what it would be. Okay, so it depends on your situation, okay? But so, so you would get taxed less, presumably, However, you would get taxed on what, however much money you have. So if you have a million dollars in the bank in that account, yeah, let's say it's, it's taxed at 15%, that's $150,000 off the top uh, if you were to cash that out, okay? So that's a big deal. Now for a Roth IRA, same growth, same timeline, that account grows way more because you are not getting the tax deduction when you make the contribution on your tax return. But in exchange, the instrument allows you in a Roth IRA to get your profits, to get what the growth in this account tax free, zero tax. That's pretty amazing. I don't know too many instruments that actually would allow you that kind of a return. And that's the power of a Roth IRA, okay? Um, and when you put real estate in there, uh, you, you can actually make more, but it depends on how you invest. So we'll get to that. So here's a slide that hopefully it should, it should ring a big bell for you. Uh, in my opinion, uh, and from my experience, uh, these, this kind of self-directed IRA, uh, it could be your ticket to a rich retirement. Well, uh, that is as long as you understand um, and follow the IRS rules. And we'll go um, into some of that. We don't really have time to get into all the technicalities and uh, complexities of it, but I'll give you uh, just a, a, a bit of, a, um, of, of the rules, okay? Again, you can read that long publication, 590, uh, the IRS publication. You can also read my book when it comes out, you'll get way more. But for today, here is what the rules are. The first one and very important one is that you cannot purchase property you already own in that IRA. So I always get people who, who say to me, oh, I wanna put my home in there. The IRS says, no, 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 that we will not allow that, okay? You cannot put property you already own, whether it's your own home, or an investment property. If it's in your name, you cannot put it into a self-directed IRA. That's a big one. If you do do that, if you, if you this actually applies to all the rules, so I'll say it now. Uh, in case you are tempted to, do, uh, to break the rules, which most of us are sometimes, especially when we think they're wrong, <laughs> right? So, but if you do that and the IRS catches you, they will disqualify your account and you will be taxed at 100%. Ooh, nasty. So don't do it, it's not worth it. 
that's that's my take on it. All right. Um, the next thing the IRS uh, will um, not allow you to do is they have a, actually a whole explanation as to what a disqualified party is. So um, you could you know you could say well you know I'll just uh, do it in the name of my spouse or something like that or you know my daughter etc. Those are this disqualified parties. You cannot do that. So you have to do it for yourself not with other people who you who might be part of your uh, family, okay? Uh, the IRS will not allow that. Um, there's also no indirect benefits. So you cannot pay yourself for any service you do uh, for a property, for instance, in, in the account. Um, you, know, you can do, if you want to do it yourself, fine, but you cannot get paid for it. Okay, so everything must stay in that account. All right, so next part, hang on, is it moving? Yes, perfect, we're on the next slide. By the way, unfortunately, I couldn't get those uh, points to do to show up individually, so I apologize for that. It does it on other slides, but not this one, uh, or the, the last two. All right, so uh, IRS, uh, or IRA, sorry, Freudian slip, uh, IRA investments are uniquely titled. What does that mean? It means that uh, you must have a custodian, and I'll go into that in just a second. It's a specialty trust, basically. Uh, you must have that set up. That's where your account would sit. And uh, then the way you purchase such an investment would be um, ABC Trust Company, uh, and then you are named with your account and your name under that. So it's specific to that custodian and that account, which is also why custodians play a very important role in this instrument. Again, I'll go into, into it more. Now, um, the, the investments actually, <clears throat> hang on, I need to take a sip of water. Thank you. All right, so um, you could actually take out a loan in the, um, in the self-directed IRA. So if you wanted to buy, let's say an apartment building and you had maybe $100,000 sitting in the account or even less than that, um, then you could take out what's called a non-recourse loan. And with that loan, it's a specialty loan, so your bank will not be able to, to make this loan. It's a higher risk loan, uh, and you also have to have more of a down payment for it, et cetera. But all of that I will just briefly touch on, which I just did. But the most important component is if you have debt financing in your IRA, in your self-directed IRA, you can have it. It's not a problem. But what happens is whatever profits come, let's say from that apartment building example that I just gave you, uh, the IRS will, uh, will tax you on, um, on the financing you get for that. It's, it's unrelated business income taxes that they will, uh, they will uh, assess. And that's not for the entire amount, it is for the growth that investment generates. That's what they will, will do. But I'm not a CPA, so you probably ought to speak with someone, find a CPA who understands this instrument, because many of them don't, unfortunately. So speak with someone who actually knows. And, um, and, and I'll, you know, again, there are ways for you to, uh, to find out how to figure out where to find these people, okay? All right, so um, the next two ones are very important and they come back to uh, what I said on the previous slide, and that is every expense for your apartment building in this example uh, would, uh, has to be written from that self-directed IRA account. You cannot take out your personal checkbook and write a check for an expense. Uh, so that's, that's a no-no. And the same thing, uh, it, 
also happens when whatever income, let's say you have 10 units in that in that apartment buildings, they're all occupied, you are collecting rents in that building from your tenants. And those rents obviously are income. Okay, so you cannot get that income into your personal bank account, it must flow back into your self-directed IRA account. That's the whole purpose of this, to grow your account so that you will have the money when you retire. Okay, so uh, hopefully that makes sense. Now, having said this, let's go to the, another big piece in that I already um, addressed that briefly, and that is the importance of your custodian. So when I started in this, uh, in this particular niche some 20 years ago, most people or many people had no idea that self-directed IRAs existed and that you could invest in alternative assets through them, okay? Uh, and there were only two or three custodians at the time, so you didn't have much choice. Well, now uh, it's a big industry and it's very tough sometimes to figure out uh, who uh, who is who and what you would get from them. So here's what to look for. Uh, by the way, uh, Kirsty, before I start on that, did you want to say something to, I think I, I put a bonus in for people. Yes, we'll be sharing your uh, bonus document for uh, listing custodians um, and how to evaluate them uh, in the follow-up email. Great. So uh, you can look forward to that. Uh, I, I there, There's a good amount of research that was done for you. So you'll get a four page document and uh, it will get you off to a running start in looking for the right custodian, if you're so inclined. So looking for that custodian, here it is. Look for accessibility. I've had custodians, uh, I've, I'm on my third one, um, unfortunately, but I've had um, two of the previous ones, you know, they, they hired people from the Philippines. Well, that's great. I love, I love them, except they A, had no idea what to tell me. So it, it all became an accessibility game. And um, plus uh, some of the knowledge that was missing from, from those custodians. So eventually uh, I moved to, the third one, and now I'm happy. <laughs> uh, but I, I learned the hard way. And um, that document that you're going to get hopefully will save you that time, okay? That time, the experience, all of that. So when you look for a custodian, make sure they know what customer service means and uh, they call you back in a timely fashion. Uh, they are able to address your questions, uh, et cetera. Now, um, the fee structure for these custodians is higher than what a, um, let's say a brokerage house would charge you. Most of the fees for a brokerage house you will not see because they're either factored into the investment uh, price. It's already, you've already paid for it and you don't even know it. Uh, or there's a specialty fee on top of that. Uh, but most of the time, you will not really see much of that for brokerage houses. But for, uh, for these custodians, um, because it's a specialty custodian uh, and it's a higher risk kind of uh, investment from a custodian's point of view, uh, their fees are going to be higher. So I just know that. But here's the thing. Who cares? If you make profits that way outweigh those fees, please, you know, um, talking about how, how expensive they are is probably not the right thing to, to pursue. Um, again, my opinion, uh, you make up your own mind. Uh, so, and then turnaround times. So because there are contracts underlying all of these investments in real estate anyway, you need to know that what their turnaround times are because everything has to go through them, through that custodian, all the paperwork flows through them. And you wanna make sure that they have reasonable turnaround times. Uh, in my opinion, anywhere between three to uh, five business days, but some of them you know, might be a little longer. Some of them might even be shorter. Usually uh, you can expedite things 
but you will pay a fee for that. So just know that, okay? Uh, so those, those are uh, important. And then knowledge about self-directed IRA investments. A custodian who knows very little about self-directed IRAs, which is kind of un unlikely, but it happens, probably is not the right custodian. Okay, uh, yeah. So you just need to need to know that. And then um, how uh, long uh, this particular custodian has been in business, and check out their customer rating. It's important. It's not the end all which is why it's last on this list, but it is important. So check it out. All right, so now the big decision for you is, is this instrument even close to anything you would consider for yourself? I hope the answer is yes, because the benefits are huge uh, depending on how you use it, okay? Um, I'm gonna go into the seven steps of tax-free profits, which means I'm focusing on Roth IRAs. We're not talking about returns in the um, in traditional IRAs. I personally like Roth IRAs. If you have a traditional one, it's fine. You might consider rolling it over into a Roth. But again, that's all. That's something to discuss with, with your CPA. Uh, and other professionals who can help you assess that, whether it's the right move for you. So just, just keep that in mind. Anyway, we're talking about Roth IRAs. So that's why I say tax-free profits. So uh, the first and obvious step is to establish and then to fund an account. So you could fund such an account by either uh, rolling things over from another IRA uh, into one that allows you to invest in real estate, or you could just start with uh, your annual contribution and move from there. So that's one way. When you are, uh, once you've done that, then identify your investment. Maybe it's paper. Um, maybe it's, I'm, I'm a big fan, for instance, of note investing. Uh, you can make some very nice, uh, nice, returns on that and all you need to do it's tied to real estate but you don't own the real estate the, the real estate actually guarantees you the return that's being paid so what's happening here is you become the bank your money works at a a nice interest rate for you versus a three percent one okay or one percent i don't even know what banks pay today <laughs> anyway so um Next one, ensure the correct title for uh, your investment. And that I already touched on that. You have to take title with the custodian first, then your account number and your name follow. Uh, you cannot do it in your personal name. Uh, it is, it's, it's a no-no. And a good custodian, if you uh, submit paperwork to them that shows your personal name on it and not the right titling, they will call you up or send you a message saying, please redo this, <laughs> right? Um, because they, they can't accept it. There's liability in that for them, okay? So um, once you've done that, then eventually you have to request the, for the custodian to fund your investment. So funds then go into to the person you're investing with, et cetera, uh, or you're purchasing it from uh, directly from the custodian. You cannot write a personal check. Um, there is one way to get around that with a, a checkbook uh, LLC that's specific to such accounts, but I'm not focusing on that here because it's, it's, a, it's an instrument um, that is probably not the most important one for beginners uh, and also way more complex, okay? So I'm just gonna go from here. Uh, let's see, and we're continuing. So uh, once you've, you've asked the custodian to uh, transfer funds for the investment, uh, they then uh, remit the funds and they keep records for you. Now that's nice, but the big caveat is, yes, they do, but do it yourself as well, please. 
it's just good practice and it, it will save you a lot of headaches uh, down the line doing that. All right, and then maintaining your IR investment. Let's come back to the apartment building. Uh, so if you have an apartment building, you will probably have property taxes to pay or maintenance or uh, repairs. Um, let's see, uh, management, property management, all of that, that would have to be done uh, through your self-directed IRA account. So make sure you maintain things, make sure you check in on the investment uh, in that account, et cetera, um, on a regular basis. Most custodians will send you a quarterly statement, but you should probably um, you just set up your own schedule. Okay, and then uh, the next one is, and that sounds easy, hold the investment uh, and eventually sell the investment. Now, if you have an apartment building that you bought 10 years ago uh, and you're selling that tomorrow <laughs> uh, or putting it on the market tomorrow, you're probably going to see a very nice appreciation aside from the rents you collected when you sell that thing. So that's where you make profits, that's where your account grows. And by the way, tax-free, because we're talking about a Roth. Okay, so that's, uh, that, that's what I'll say here. Okay, so next, here's a, just a brief um, schematic for you, a brief uh, picture of how all of this looks. Um, and everything comes from that uh, self-directed IRA custodian, which is why uh, you give the instructions to them, but uh, they are uh, performing those or they're carrying out your instructions. So very important for you to choose a good custodian when you, uh, you can trust. That's now, now you can see there's so many different uh, pieces here that the fees that, that the custodian charges uh, are probably less important when you, because doing this yourself, uh, it's not as easy as it appears. I'll just leave it there. So let's uh, go to real estate investing. Uh, here are the steps. A, set your sales. If you've attended any previous uh, presentations by me, you will know that I'm big about having a plan, having a strategy. And this is as true for self-directed IRAs as it is for anything else. So please, uh, before you set up the account or while you set up the account, make sure you know what you want to accomplish. Set your sales. Just, um, yeah. Otherwise, it might be a rudderless ride. Okay. Then you go to locating possible investments. There are lots of different ways to do that. I've talked about some of those in previous presentations. Uh, and again, the book um, that's coming out has uh, more on that. Um, once you've done that, run the numbers. Just run it as a business from the start uh, and make sure that those numbers align and they make sense because sometimes expenses can wipe you out. You need to know ahead of time how to mitigate this, how to mitigate any risk uh, those properties might hold for you. So run the numbers, then check the facts, the neighborhood, the markets, um, you know, who would be your tenants, for instance, that kind of stuff. Check facts. Make sure you do all this. Uh, by the way, there is a due diligence checklist uh, that comes as a bonus to the book, uh, but you're not getting that today. If you do buy the book, uh, you will get it, okay? Um, now, because everything in real estate is contractual, you must read those contracts. You must understand them uh, or have someone who can help you understand them and make sure you assess all the terms in those contracts. So, so all the fine print is clear, okay? And obviously there are other components, but I'm giving you what um, is right, right out the gate, what's most important, okay? There are other things. So just remember that. So having said all of this, I know it's a lot of information. Uh, I hope you're good to go. <laughs> uh, so yeah, uh, that's my big hope. 
check all, you know, make sure you check it all out. So here's, a, here's an example for a single family home. Now, the purchase price, obviously you would not get that purchase price in San Francisco or the Bay Area. So you have to go elsewhere to do it and uh, versus going through the whole thing, uh, you'll get the idea. So uh, you have to factor all those costs into, um, into the property. So it's like doing real estate, except any, any transaction, except you're doing it in your self-directed IRA. All right, so here is, um, here's the other thing. Um, you know, I just noticed that I don't think I put uh, the, oh yes, the rent is on there. So the monthly income on this property is 1500, which uh, for, for a property with that purchase price um, uh, is probably right on or very close to it. And then uh, the other components here, you have to, you have, you have to account for that. Um, now the cash on cash return, there's a whole section in my book about cash on cash return. In your self-directed IRA, I recommend that you have a cash on cash return of about 15% or more. It's not as easy as it appears to get that. So doing your homework and, and going through a lot of different properties to figure out what actually works would be the way to go. All right, so uh, here is uh, an example for a duplex, uh, obviously a different price. Uh, the, the costs are adjusted for that. Um, you see the rental income there and all the other uh, parts that would actually uh, give you uh, show you what that investment would net you uh, at the end of having paid all the expenses, uh, dealt with lots of other things. So you, you need to know all those numbers. Uh, that's a part of running the numbers. But these are two examples. Uh, and hopefully you see that creating true wealth for you, for yourself and your family is entirely possible in this instrument. Um, we thank the U.S. government for, for providing it to us. By the way, currently there is, um, there is a um, legislation uh, in process that wants to take all of this away from us, uh, and uh, it's not happened, and who knows whether it will or won't, uh, but keep your eyes peeled for that. You want to make sure to keep this lovely instrument in place. No pensions are coming, no, social security, who knows what's gonna happen with that. So create your wealth yourself this way. That's one way to do it. Now you can do it with Bitcoin, et cetera. Again, that's not what I'm doing uh, because that's not my expertise, okay? So, but you might have other ideas, all right? All right, so the takeaways are start with the plan. Not surprising after what I said about strategy. Um, Evaluate custodians, open an account, and fund it. Now, on that particular point, I sometimes have people who do that and then never do anything with the account. Well, that's an expensive way of losing money. Uh, I mean, you, 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 if you don't use the instrument, it's not going to do anything for you. So make sure you uh, not only open it and fund it, but you use it. Uh, that's where the power is. Just having one doesn't help, <laughs> okay? So uh, go ahead and do that. Follow IRS rules, my big one here. Yeah, follow the rules because they're actually in your favor, <laughs> okay? Even though there are people who say they aren't because they'd like to have their home in there and you know they're thinking about other creative ways to increase their wealth uh, that the IRS will not allow you to do. So, but anyway, there you go. Um, even though you will not get rich from your contributions, your annual contributions, always contribute the maximum. It has a magical effect. If you do that for several years, you'll see what I mean. So just take my word for it. <laughs> well, you don't have to take my word for it. I'm just saying that do it. It's, it's better um, to do it and then use the account, okay? Do your homework. I harp on that all the time. Just do your homework. There are many people out there, some of them sophisticated, who know how to fleece others. 
And the reason that happens is um, oftentimes, not always, but oftentimes is that people want something convenient. So they just believe the person because they like him or whatever. They haven't done their homework. Uh, so please join the group that does homework and do all your homework and then build a team because investing is a team sport. Uh, your custodian is a big part of that team. So finding the right one is important. You probably want to have the right uh, realtor uh, wherever you invest, uh, the right, you know, all kinds of other things that you could do, okay? And now having said all of this, I will just remind you that all investments, and I mean all investments, carry risk. So you probably ought to know uh, what's important for you. You know, what, that's, that comes back to your plan. And just make sure you understand that and then move forward accordingly, okay? All right, I hope you got some value from this. Now I'm just gonna tell you this. Uh, some of you may know Jim Rohn. Uh, I'm a big fan of his. Um, and I'll just tell you that he was a motivational speaker, no longer with us, uh, unfortunately. And, um, you know, I put this quote up here, start from wherever you are and with whatever you've got. And the reason this is here is that I, I speak with many people, you probably do too, who say, oh, I don't have enough money. Oh, I don't have the expertise. Oh, I can't do this for whatever reason, okay? But the truth is, or I'm too old or I'm too young or whatever, um, if you don't start, you're not gonna see any results. <laughs> that's, that's really the truth. And so it doesn't matter what you've got. It, it matters how you leverage what you've got. So for some people who have got no, no money, leveraging your brain is probably just as important. Well, it's true for all of us that, that it, it's just important to leverage what you've got. So it's not all about money, but it is, uh, it's, it's just very important to do that. All right, so uh, that's it. So here's a special uh, offer for you because this book, there, here's the title right there, is coming out on December 15th. Um, and if you'd like to, uh, Christy, I think you are sending a questionnaire, right? That I, the questionnaire that I put together later. Yeah. 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 So on that questionnaire, uh, there will be um, a question. <coughs> uh, sorry. Mm. All right. There will be a question on there as to why, whether you would like to receive an official announcement. Uh, when the book uh, is uh, uh, publishes. Um, and if you do, then please uh, say yes and fill out your email address and I will put you on the list of people who will learn about, <clears throat> uh, about the book be, uh, publishing, okay? And an extra special <laughs> offer is, I, uh, because you're the first group I'm actually presenting this to about the book, et cetera, um, I have a limited number of review copies available. Uh, if you would like to get one, uh, please just ask. And I'm happy to send it to you. Um, obviously, it would be wonderful if you then read it and um, provided an, an honest review of it. I mean, um, that, that's the dream of every author. So I'm putting it out there to you. If you would like the review copy, it's going to come to you in an electronic format. Um, but if you'd like it, I'm happy to send it to you. So just let me know. All right. Okay. I think that's it. And then the bonus that the, we, we already talked about uh, is coming from uh, Christy. She's going to send that out alongside the questionnaire. And that's what I've got for you today. I hope you got some value from this. Raise your hand if you did, or uh, just let me know. And um, yeah, I wish you great success. I wish you great success with this. So um, yeah. And thank you to the San Francisco Public Library for putting on programs like this. Um, I'm always delighted to 
give back to the library. Um, I use it extensively and I really love what the library is doing with its programming. And I hope you do too. <laughs> All right, so here we go. That's, uh, that's it. Thank you again. Um, do you have any so questions? Have, I don't know whether, do we have time for questions? There, we have a few minutes for questions and there are quite a few in the chat. <laughs> yes. How late, would you, how late would you like to, um, to stay on to answer the questions, Gabrielle? Uh, let me see. I don't know what time it is. Can you tell me what time it is it's, right now? It's 1.57. Okay, so uh, if we do 10 minutes, uh, that, that would work. But uh, I would like, because I don't have my clock right in front of me, uh, if you would please uh, time it, that would be great. Okay, great. Okay, Thank so you. I'm going to start at the top. Um, someone asked, if we are nearing retirement, can we still do the SC Roth IRA? The answer is yes. Thank you. Um, all right. And then uh, this was referring to a, an early slide, but someone asked of condos, and I guess she wants to know if condos can be considered as a... Yes. Okay. I, I, so here, here's what I'm going to... So I'm giving you short yeses, but uh, you know they're always qualifier on these. So you need to know more about the instrument in order to see whether condos make sense, whether... Um, so if you're nearing retirement, yes, you can do this. Absolutely. Maybe you have a different account. You, you could roll over. I don't know. Uh, if you're already retired, you probably have a 401k plan that you could roll over into, um, into a uh, self-directed IRA. Now, if you're not retired doing that, you can do it, but it, it, um, uh, for it's not most companies if your company has one has a 401k or 403b they will not allow you to do it because they want you to stay with their plan so so it all depends on what you're again coming back to the plan to the strategy to seeing what you already have and how best to do it um so that would be it um yeah so the short answers are yes and then they're qualifiers, <laughs> okay? Thanks, Gabrielle. Here's yeah. another question. If you annually contribute the maximum amount to a 401k, can you also have an SDIRA? Yes. Okay, thank you. However, here, here's the thing. So if you, uh, so if you contribute to a, a 401k, is, was that the question? Yes. Okay, so 401k, um, I don't know what your contribution limit is. I don't know which company you have that plan through, all of that. Uh, ordinarily, you can set up an, a self-directed IRA anyway. So that kind of, because you're doing that yourself. Usually, however, so you could have, I have two self-directed IRAs, okay? One is with my, my stockbroker, with, my, with, with the broker test in which I cannot do anything but do stocks, bonds, mutual funds, et cetera, right? Uh, the other one is with, um, with an account that allows me to invest in real estate and other alternative assets. Now, here's the thing, I have two accounts. If you have two accounts, you need to figure out uh, how much you want to contribute to each because what happens is with those two accounts I have, I can decide maybe I want to contribute 5,000 uh, to uh, my self-directed IRA where I invest in real estate, which would be a higher number for me because that's what I want to do most of uh, uh, my investing with. Uh, and then let's say I'm in the bracket that allows me to do a total contribution of 7,000. I could contribute the, the remaining 2000 into the brokerage house SDIRA, which is, a, it, I, I say SDIRA, they usually will say, uh, you know, it's a regular IRA, which is, which is fine. The, uh, the, it's self-directed as far as our brokerage house is concerned anyway. So the, the point of this is that you cannot contribute 7,000 each to both accounts. You can only contribute the total allowed per year uh, to the accounts, meaning 
uh, it has to be the total for both accounts. You cannot just go, oh yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this for this account, for this account, for this account. You, it must be the grand total for all accounts that are self-directed IRAs. I hope that makes sense. Thank you. Um, there's another question. If the real estate invested in cannot be your own property or that of a disqualified party who you are familiar with, then what property would you possibly be interested in investing in? Um, well, uh, here's the thing. It's going to be your property owned through your self-directed IRA. You just can't put your personal name on it. Okay, so that's one. So it's an investment property. These are all investments in those accounts. So your own home is not an investment uh, contrary to what some people will tell you, okay? Uh, the, the, your own home, uh, yeah, you might make a profit down the line with it, but initially you need a place to live like everybody else. So it's not an investment. You're paying for that either by, with a mortgage or property or whatever. So it's the, the thing is this, the IRS will not allow you to own your own home in that account because then everybody you know, goes, oh yeah, I live there. This is a nice little bonus to me. No, they want you to invest in any property that would generate income for you. That is, that is it. Now, income can be regular rents that come in or you buying a property and then selling it down the line for a huge profit. Uh, so it can be both, but it must be an investment property. It cannot just be uh, something, you know, you are, you already own, whether that's your own home or an investment property that's outside the, uh, the self-directed IRA. I hope uh, you get the distinction here. So what would you invest in? Any property that generates income for you? That's the short answer. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. I think you answered this, but um, someone asked early on, can we use SDIRA to help buy a house for our children? If yes, whose name should own the house? No, that's uh, that's those are disqualified parties. Okay. Uh, you can, so if you want to do something uh, that benefits your children, those accounts are inheritable. And uh, there are also other ways to, to do it, but you need to speak to a CPA who's familiar with the instrument. But, um, you know, you can't, so it's a disqualified party. Your child would be a disqualified party. So would your son-in-law or daughter-in-law be. Uh, so, so you have to uh, just be aware of those rules. Thank you. Yeah. Um, someone was wondering if you could share who your custodian is. Well, I don't want to, <laughs> uh, I would rather you read my bonus uh, uh, document to you. You'll see the custodian is on there, by the way, but uh, you'll, you'll see um, the differences between the custodians. And I would almost think that you're going to choose that particular custodian just because you see the difference. Okay, but I, I prefer not to give like an advertisement for a custodian. Thank you. Um, so, and this is covered in your bonus document too, but someone asked, what are the general range of fees that are charged? Again, it depends. I like if you have a million dollar account, which some people do, uh, they will charge uh, uh, more for that account because it, it, it takes more management. It takes a whole different oversight, all of that. Um, so some of those fees are tiered, okay? Uh, but overall, you, you're gonna look at on the low end, something like, uh, well, anywhere between $300 a year to thousands of dollars a year, depending on what you have in that account and so forth. If you have a very basic account, uh, 300 a year is probably right on. Just make sure they're not, nickeling and diming you for every transaction you do. You want to have it rolled into the, the annual fee versus paying uh, transaction fees on every asset. That becomes expensive. So uh, again, look at the, look, look at the uh, bonus that uh, you're gonna get. And I think it will demystify a lot of stuff for you. 
Okay, thank you. Um, someone wanted to clarify, are you suggesting that Roth IRAs are more truly a SD IRA compared to traditional IRAs? Because in a traditional, you cannot invest in real estate, but you can invest in real estate using the SD IRA? Um, no, I'm not suggesting that. And the reason is that uh, you can invest in real estate in either the traditional one or uh, in the Roth IRA. The difference is if you do it with a traditional one, you will pay taxes on your gains at the end when you get distributions. If you, however, invest in a Roth IRA, your gains will be tax-free. That's the difference. There, you can still invest in the same instrument. And that's, you know, so when you find a custodian and you say, I want to open an account with you, they're going to ask you, uh, would you like to open a traditional IRA or a Roth IRA? Uh, now, if you already have a traditional one, you know, then you have to decide whether you want to pay tax on what you have right now and roll it over into a Roth or whether you just want to keep the traditional one, you pay tax on it later. So it depends on your situation. It's not like one size fit all kind of answer, which almost nothing in real estate is, unfortunately. Um, yeah. So to make it clear, uh, apparently there was something I didn't say correctly, uh, but in either of these, the traditional and the Roth account, you could uh, in, in invest in real estate, not with your brokerage house, but with a specialty custodian. I hope that clears it up. Thank you, Gabrielle. I think I misread the question. It, it, oh. Uh, so that's, I think, uh, the, I'm sorry about that. It just is the chat scroll. Um, I kind of lost control of the scroll. <laughs> Not a problem. So what, what, um, what did the question actually say? So I'm giving a big tirade about, <laughs> yes. about that. So uh, let, me, let me hear the question, please. Okay. Um, she wanted to clarify, um, are you suggesting that Roth IRAs are more truly an SD IRA compared to traditional IRAs? Because in a traditional, you cannot invest in real estate, but you can invest in real estate using a Roth IRA. Uh, I, I did answer the question, okay. so it, I heard it correctly. So okay. yes, you can invest in both of them in real estate as long as you set it up with the right custodian. So if you call Schwab or uh, or E-Trade or Ameritrade or, or something like that, and you say, I want to now invest my money uh, that's sitting in either one of these accounts with you in real estate, they're going to say no. <laughs> Uh, because that's not what they do. You have to you have to do it with a custodian that is set up to help you do real estate and other alternative investments. Thank you. Uh, Dr. 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 We're at time right okay. now. It's two ten. Do you? Oh. Want, uh, mm -hmm. So if people want to contact you, can they do that through your email? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. Yeah, I, I, the only thing I will say is I, I have a super busy schedule um, and I'm happy to answer what I can, uh, you know, but it may take me a little while to get to it. So please uh, don't think I've forgotten you. Um, I will answer it as soon as I, as I have the time to do so. Uh, I hope you understand. Yeah. I can also share the chat questions with you. Um, make it easier for you, Gabrielle. I have a hard time hearing you, uh, oh, Christina. Yeah, I can share the, the questions in the chat with you. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be great. And I mean, I don't know whether there are emails there, but if you really want to have your question answered, just email me and I'm happy to answer them okay. as far as I can, obviously. Great. Thank you. So there have been lots of comments in the chat too that say that they want to receive a, a copy, a review copy. And so the so uh -huh. I only have uh, 10 review copies available. Uh, so the first 10 people who put that in, uh, just please let me know uh, who those are, uh, Christy, and I will be happy to share this. Okay, great, thank you. Okay, yeah, well, I'm sorry that not everybody's gonna get one, <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Gabrielle, for another great presentation. And um, again, we'll be sharing her bonus document and the recording to this presentation in the follow-up email later today. 
thank you again, everyone. I hope you got value. Thank you, Gabrielle. That's wonderful. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.